Hi, welcome to Exquisite Academy. Today we'll be looking at differential equations reducible to first order homogeneous form. Now, in our last video, we talked about homogeneous first order differential equations. Now, there are some equations that are first order but are not homogeneous, but can be forced to be homogeneous, like you can manipulate it to be first order homogeneous. So these equations are always of this form, dy dx equals to ax plus by plus c all over dx plus ey plus f. Now, the power of x here is 1, the power of y here is 1, but there's a constant here, c. The power of x here is 1, the power of y here is 1, there's a constant here. So supposing this constant was not here, let's say this part was not here, this part was not here, this would have been an homogeneous first order differential equation. But because of this constant, it is no longer a differential equation. Now, whenever you encounter things like this, the best way to make it homogeneous is to see this x as another variable plus a constant. You no longer see x as x, you see x as another variable plus a constant. Now let's say x, let's, let's call x, let's call x, let's call x is equals to x plus h. And let's say y is equals to y plus h. So that's what I'm just doing now. Anyway, I see x, I put x plus h. Anyway, I see y, I put y plus h. Now you will observe what will happen here. Ax plus h plus b y plus h, then plus c, all over dx plus h plus e y plus h plus f. Now, if I open the bracket here, I will have dy over dx equals to ax, then plus this by. I want to work with the x and the y plus this by, then plus this ah and bh plus c. So we have, sorry, Let's call this part K. Let's not call it, we have H here. Let's call it K. So I'm calling this side K. I'm calling this side K. Since we have H here, let's use another constant here. So we'll be having AH plus BK. So we have AH plus BK plus C. If we do the same for the denominator, we're going to have D, D, DX plus dh plus ey plus ek. So we have dx plus ey plus dh plus ek plus f. Now this is what we will now do. Because we are forcing this to be homogeneous, for this differential equation to be homogeneous, first of all, this is still in terms of the small y and small x. So let me establish some facts here. This the small y over the small x is the same thing as the small y over the small x. And let me just multiply through by big Y. This is just one. Then we have big X. This is just one. So we know that this is this because this is one, this is one. So I want to manipulate this part to look more of the small x over this and this. So if I manipulate this, I can change this and bring this one under here and bring this one under this part. I'll have the small y over the big y dot. I have this the big x over the small x. The what's left is this the big y over the big x. We know that the y over the y is 1. The x over the x is 1. So this part is 1, 1. So it therefore means that the small y over the small x is equals to the big y over the big x. So we can change this part and write it as this. 
dy over dx. Now, this is where the problem comes. Now, because we have gotten it in this form, because we have gotten it in this form, what we'll do, we'll assume that this part is zero and this part is zero. Because once this part is zero, this is homogeneous. The power of x is one, the power of y is one. Now, we'll now look for the value of h and k that makes this part zero. So that means I'll be solving these two equations simultaneously. But however, there's a problem. Now, if I consider this equation as a straight line equals zero, and this equals zero as a straight line, and taking h as the vertical axis, taking k as the horizontal axis, this straight line will have a gradient. And this straight line will have a gradient. From our coordinate geometry, we said whenever two lines have the same gradient, it means that those two lines are parallel. So supposing that these two lines are parallel, if they are parallel, it means that their gradients are equal. And once two lines are parallel, it means that they don't have any point of intersection. So there's basically no way you can solve for H and K for that scenario. So let's, let's check for the values that make them parallel. So we have AH. I want to solve for the gradient of this. So if I divide through by a, I have this. So the gradient becomes minus b over a, while the gradient of this one becomes minus e over d. Now we are saying that if there are two gradients, if the two gradients are equal, that this you cannot solve for h and k. So in that case, this substitution we did here, we won't do it again. So anytime you find out that their gradients are equal, you find out that this substitution is wrong. So in my next video, we'll talk about the right substitution you use for that. So let's say we have the two gradients are equal. So this minus cancels out. We have B over A is equals to E over D. Leading us to BD is equals to AE. Leading us to BD minus AE equals zero. So this is the condition. Whenever BD minus AE is equal to zero, it means that this substitution, we are not going to use this substitution. We are going to try another substitution. Now, let's check. This is the BD. This is the BD and this is the AE. If I multiply by minus one, this becomes AE minus BD equals zero. So, this is the AE and this is the BD. So, whenever this times this minus this times this is zero, it means that we will not work with this substitution. This substitution fails. We cannot manipulate it that way. So, it's more like seeing this as the determinant of A, B, D, E. If it's equals to zero, if the determinant is equals to zero, we will not use this substitution. If the determinant is not equal to zero, we are going to use this, this substitution. So now, in my next video, we are going to solve this question quickly in my next video. And when we solve that, you will see how we are going to do it. That will be all for this video. Thanks for watching.